QuickBooks Online 2024 Rental Income Invoice Receive Payment and Deposit. Get ready and some coffee because the accounting team is on board with QuickBooks Online 2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunchy numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our Gick Ray Guitars 2024 QuickBooks Online sample company file we set up in a prior presentation. Opening up the major financial statement reports like we do every time. The reports on the left hand side in the favorites. Right click in that balance sheet so we can open link in a new tab. Right click in the P&L profit loss. Open link in a new tab. One more time for the trusty trial balance. Let's tab to the right, close up that hamburger. We're going to change the range for the first two months of 2024. 01, 01, 24 tab, 02, 28, 24 tab. We want to see it on a month by month, side by side, and then we will run it so we can refresh it. Tabbing to the right, repeating the process, closing the boogie, and changing the ranging. 01, 01, 24 tab, 02, 28, 24, month by month, broken out. Run it to refresh it, tab into the right, closing the hand buggy, changing the range, 010124 tab, 02824 tab, month by month breakout and run it to refresh it. Let's go back to the balance sheet. Let's review our story. We have the guitar shop here that we have set up, originally thinking that we're going to make most of our income uh, selling the guitars, and then we tacked on some guitar lessons that we're going to be providing but now the, the the neighborhood has gone down a bit we had to put bars on the on the windows and whatnot because people keep on walking out of our store stealing stuff because the california doesn't care or whatever and, and if we stop them we might get sued for hurting them or something so now we're like oh man we need another revenue source so now we're thinking that we have this equipment we can rent it possibly so we started a new revenue source of renting uh the equipment we're going to rent out a band set and that was the idea so quick recap of the process if i look at the flow chart over here this is a desktop flow chart we're using for online purposes noting that in the revenue cycle typically by the end of the cycle we would expect money to be coming in for goods and services provided the arrow going this way left to right but in our case now we have a situation where we're going from right to left because we're going to receive a payment and we already have received the payment before we actually do the work so how did that work in our system here we had an estimate estimate was made someone comes into the shop they're going to ask for the rental of the equipment or they're going to call it in the the person that works at our store gets woken up and is like no not again i'm being robbed oh no it's going to be they just it's just someone that wants rental property okay and so then they take down the estimate for the the rental property and to see how much it's going to cost and then they took a deposit down in order for us to hold on to the equipment for them and so they did that with a receive payment form so the receive payment form by definition generally will always basically reduce the accounts receivable however we didn't tie it to an invoice because we didn't have an invoice because we received the payment before we invoiced that's why it's backwards that's the issue resulting in what we might call a credit balance which means a negative income or negative accounts receivable account that we can then apply to the invoice once it's ready for us to basically invoice them 
And so that's what we're going to do this time. Now we're going to complete this process. We're going to take that negative amount, that credit, and apply it out to the invoice. Let's go back on over and recap that situation internally. We'll go to the first tab here. And within the first tab, we can remember in the sales over here, we have the sales tab. And we're going to go into all sales. And we will recall if we look at the estimates, we go into the estimates that we had the uh, estimate that we made for customer number five. Uh, wait a sec, that's not the estimate. I want the estimates. There it is. I unfiltered and it was it was accepted so the estimate had been accepted and then we received a, a payment for it we can also check that out by going to the estimates tab over here if we wanted to track our estimates and look at the estimates that are currently uh accepted i think we have the accepted estimate so there it is here and if we go into the customers we can also filter by estimate as well so we're going to imagine customer number five now contacts us and the, there's a new guy or the same guy, let's just say the same guy's under the desk. And he's like, he can't even remember what happened the, the, the day before. He's like, oh, yeah, I don't even know what happens from day to day. But let me just look in here and see. They can go into the customer five. Oh, your name is customer five. So we have the estimate that was made. Oh, I see what happened yesterday. There was an estimate that was made and then it was accepted. And then we collected a payment which was which was uh the down payment basically and i can see now you have a negative 200 dollars, which has been unapplied basically a credit balance which we can now apply uh to the invoice we can also see that in the sub ledger so let's go to the tab to the right right click on it and duplicate that tab so we can see kind of the issue from a financial statement standpoint go into the to the reports on the left hand side closing the hand buggy scrolling down to who owes you money we go to the customer balance detail let's do the customer balance detail and so you can see from an internal perspective it looked good even that even that guy that can't even remember what happened yesterday could kind of figure out what happened by looking at the internal books but the issue here is of course that we have this negative amount which isn't exactly proper because it's basically lowering the accounts receivable when instead it should be a positive liability so not really an issue from the bookkeeping standpoint but kind of an issue when we do the external reporting uh, types of things we've also looked at a different method to deal with this negative receivable in prior presentations if you want to look at an alternative method but we'll we'll do an adjusting entry to clear out these negative amounts as of uh, the end of the period which you might not always need if you're a small business and you're just trying to get your income statement correct for tax preparation at the end of the year because this is a balance sheet adjustment the the accounts receivable understated and the the liability understated all right so that's going to be the the general scenario so if i go back on over to this first tab here we're going to imagine that we're going to complete uh the sale at this point in time so now we have the estimate we're going to say okay now we're, we're going to we're going to imagine that the process has been completed and we're going to convert the estimate to an invoice and charge the rest of the money that the 2260. now obviously note that if it, this was real life and we were doing renting of the equipment we would possibly want another down we may, may want an, another down payment when they're holding on to the equipment right to make sure that they're going to return uh the equipment this down payment we imagined was so that we hold on to the equipment for when they show up and then when we actually give them the equipment we might want another down payment or something you know their first child or something that we hold on to or something like that, so that they return the equipment right because you can't trust anyone these days we're so we're going to say okay so let's but but in any case we're going to convert this to an invoice we'll convert the estimate to an invoice and it pulls in the invoice i'm going to close this back out and then we're going to say this is going to be customer number five and we're going to say the date let's go on 02 2824 so we'll say 022824 i'm going to remove this again and then it pulls in this information to the invoice so now we, we have the information in the invoice so note what it did not do however it didn't automatically apply the credit so 
the credit would be down here on the bottom. We would like to say, hey, look, this is the amount that we're charging, but we'd recognize that you already gave us $200. So the difference is how much you owe us at this point in time. Now note that I'm gonna save this and then apply the credit, but I just wanna point out now that whether the credit is down here or not, the journal entry will be the same. What will the journal entry be? Well, we have the income, uh, uh, which is gonna go up by 2,260, driven by the items here. It's gonna be rental income because we applied it to another area. And the accounts receivable is gonna go up by 2,260. The subledger for accounts receivable is gonna go up. We don't have any sales tax because we're imagining that we didn't sell the equipment and therefore not subject uh, to uh, the sales tax, which is great because again, that California keeps on hitting us with the sales tax when we were selling the guitars and it was getting ridiculous, just ridiculous. And then they don't, and then they don't provide the protection money because they say like, you didn't pay the sales tax as if the customer paid the sales tax, but still I'm the one that had to charge the sales tax and then pay it to him. It kind of feels like I'm the one that's in, anyways, whatever. So we, we don't have to deal with the sales tax we're gonna imagine in this case. So, so, and we don't have to deal with the inventory uh, adjustment as well. So it's a pretty straightforward journal entry, but let's save it. And then before I give it to the client, I'm not gonna send it to them because I wanna close it, save and close it first. And then I'll apply out the credit. So then I can go down here and say, okay, so now I have the $200, which is unapplied. And by the way, in the, in the settings, you might be able to set it up so it applies automatically but I kind of like that it's not applied because then I can see how these two things are linked together by manually doing it, right? So here, now we have this payment that isn't applied to anything. And I have this invoice, which now is outstanding, which I can apply the outstanding credit to. How to do that? Well, I can go into the, this credit. Let's do it this way. Uh, let's go into edit the credit. And we're gonna say that I'm gonna apply it to this invoice. This invoice wasn't there before. Now it is there. So we can tie it out to that invoice so it matches it out. So I'm gonna save and close. And so now the, the, the credit has been closed and now we have uh, the invoice here which has been partially paid. So I can see that the original invoice was 2,260. The new amount that is due, 2,060. And now if I was to edit this invoice, I can print it and send it. If I wanted to send it out now, uh, I can review and send it because now the bottom line will be showing that $200 prepayment. So you would think maybe that if this $200 had something down here, it would adjust the journal entry. But remember, it doesn't. Why? Because that $200 was already in accounts receivable as a negative number. We don't need to record it again. We're gonna record the invoice for the full amount and then it'll net out in our in our trial balance against the 200 that's already in the accounts receivable uh, tied to this particular particular customer as a negative amount resulting in the balance to be properly 2060 so we're not going to record anything for the 200 again but we can send this to the client if needed all right so let's close this back out look at the journal entry if i go to the to the uh balance sheet we're gonna say balance sheet, let's check it out. If I go into the AR, the R pirate account, R, and we see it down here, we're gonna go, this is gonna be the accounts receivable invoice uh, went to customer number five. So it looks like uh, this one, <laughs> this is the one, there's the invoice, so that's the one. All right, and then the other side, if I go back, went to the income account, go into the income account on the income statement, the P&L, the profit and loss. We made a new income line item for the equipment rental income, which has finally been executed. It wasn't, we didn't have anything in here before when we collected the security deposit because we hadn't yet provided the work. Now we're gonna imagine that we have, and we got the 2,260 in there. And of course, if we go to the subledge and notice right now it's in there as a, as a negative right there. But now, now we don't have that problem anymore because if I run the report, it should now be a positive and look normal now. So, so now uh, what, what K Paso run the report? Oh, I was looking at the wrong one. Uh, that's, that's for Eric music still has a 200. So this one, 
this is the one we were looking at. So the 2260 for customer number five uh, is the, and then 2260 or 2060 is the opening balance. The total in accounts receivable 24,236.50 ties out to what's on the balance sheet 24,236.50. So that looks muy B to the N. All right, let's continue with the process here. I'm gonna to go to the first tab. And so, so now if we track this here, we've got, we've got the payment and now we've got the invoice. If I select the invoice, boom, we're gonna imagine now that we're gonna get paid now on the invoice. So we're gonna say, okay, now we're gonna receive the payment. I can make the receive payment from that invoice. And we're gonna say that happens on the 28th. We're gonna say it's cash, let's imagine once again. And we're gonna put it into the payments to deposit like normal, whether it be cash or credit card or whatever, that might be a good thing to do if we have a system where we're gonna get some payments that aren't gonna be deposited directly into the bank account in the same amount. We're gonna to have to group them together. So we're gonna collect the rest of it. This is the original amount of the invoice. This is the open balance. We're gonna collect the open balance, 2,060. It links or ties to the invoice. The receive payment, the same form we use to get the deposit, as we know, decreases the accounts receivable, but this time we have the invoice, of course, to tie it out to. Uh, we had the invoice when last time when we when we made the but the, when we first collected the deposit, remember we used the same uh, form, but there was no invoice resulting in the credit balance or negative receivable. Now, of course, we have the invoice and we're going to receive the rest of the payment on it, decreasing the accounts receivable, but also tying it to the invoice that is outstanding in the subledger. And then we're going to put the other side into cash for the payments to deposit instead of the checking account. Let's save it and close it. So there it is. So now the invoice is marked off as paid. So that looks good. If I select it, you can track it. The, the, the payment has been received. It has not been deposited. So that's pretty cool that it has that last bit there. So we will deposit it and then kind of check that if I remember to check it. So everything's, I can see the whole process here that has happened very pretty clearly, even though it's kind of a confusing and kind of reverse or out of order process to normal accounting cycle in that we had the estimate and then we received the payment before we had the invoice and then and then we made the invoice and we got the rest of the payment and everything's kind of tied together and linked together so we can kind of figure out what's going on because it has a nice audit trail that's that's put together very neatly let's go to the balance sheet run it and check out what happened. We know that uh, the accounts receivable went down. Let's go into the AR, the R account, and we can see to, to that the AR uh, account, is this the AR account? Should have gone down, shouldn't it have of? K the heck paso. It's my Spanglish, half Spanish, half English. Hey, K the, K the heck paso. K for crying out loud. Paso a key. I think I did a date, a wrong date thing. So let's go back to the first tab. And I could see here, yeah, I wanted to put it on 228. So let's see if I can edit this one. And I'm going to change the date on 228. Change the date to 228. Okay. And then I'll save it and close it. And this transaction you're editing is linked. That's cool. I think it'll be okay. And then let's go to the balance sheet and run it again. And hopefully now. It's correct. Don't day for crying out loud as star la co transaction. Okay, so there's the payment. Boom. Okay, that looks good. Let's go back. And then the other side is in the payment to deposit. So now it's in the payment to deposit 2060. So that is good. And now of course, we can make the deposit taking it out of the payment to deposit, putting it into the good old checking account at the end of the night, because that's a good amount of money. We don't want to be holding on to that here. One of those people that keep on taking our guitars and looting our guitars might actually try to rob the cash register. So let's make that final transaction. Let's go to the first tab and we'll just make a deposit now. So I'm going to hit the plus button. We'll say we're going to the bank. We've got our armed escort. We're going to the bank going through the, the ghetto. We're gonna say this is on 022824, but that's okay. We're, we've done this a hundred times. We've been down. So we're gonna say there's our 2060K 
cash deposit. Now, obviously, if we had multiple payments of cash, we would be combining to them together. That's the point of this form so that you can put it in the bank as of one lump sum so you can reconcile. If you had credit card payments, then you might have another account that you'd have to charge fees to, remember, which might be bank service charges or something like that. And you have to come up with a system. Maybe it's like $5 so that when you deposit the money, it's going to hit the bank account in the same format on your books as on the bank's books. So you could reconcile your books to the bank's books, possibly with the help and the use of the bank feeds. But we're not going to do that. We're going to close this out. We're just, we've got a straightforward transaction, increasing the checking account. The other side is going to be decreasing undeposited funds, increasing the checking account. That is if we can make it down the block through the hood with our security force. So let's do this. So we're going to record that. We're going to go into the balance sheet, run it, check out the checking account. Let's go in there and see what happens. So there we made it. And so there's the 2060 in the in the checking account safely in the in the vault. And so we're going to say then the other side is decreasing the payments to deposit back down to zero as a clearing account should be. This is not a temporary account, by the way, like the income statement accounts. It's a clearing account and therefore it should go to zero typically more often than the income statement accounts over here. Like these ones go to zero after the month or year we close them out right but this is where we stand we're on the balance sheet this time let's check it out this is where we're at as of now this is the p l let's refresh it this is where we stand there and let's check our numbers with the trustee trial balance run in the trial balance if your numbers tie out to these numbers great if not try changing the the date range it's often a date issue as i demonstrated i believe in this problem purposefully mind you just to show you that often it is a date issue and then remember that we have the balance sheet on top of the income statement accounts, starting with the assets. These are all assets, cash, accounts receivable, inventory, investment, payment to deposit, prepaid insurance, accumulated depreciation, contra asset tied to the PP&E, property, plants, and equipment, which is the furniture and equipment. That's what the company owns represented in dollars, not in units. And the claim to the value of those assets are the liabilities and equity. The other side of the coin, starting with liabilities, accounts payable, visa, the bank, in other words, and then the government for sales tax, and then the bank again, because we got a loan from them, and then the government again for payroll taxes, and then unearned revenue, if we had any of that, because we owe the clients for payments that they made to us that we haven't done the work for yet. And then we've got our claim that being the equity portion, assets minus liabilities, equaling the book value of the company represented by equity, the owner investment, similar to what the common stock would be for a corporation, owner's equity, similar to retained earnings for a corporation and the income statement, having income as credits minus the expenses as debits, resulting in the bottom line of the income statement, net income, which is part of the equity section is just showing us the detail on the equity section. We can roll it into the equity section, which QuickBooks does automatically called the closing process once a year. So we can go up to the next year, 010125, 0101250, run it. And we can see down here now we've got in equity, everything squished in there. This representing the ownership, not or the, the earnings, not for one year back but for the life of the organization, which have not yet been distributed to the owners in the form of draws, if a, if a sole proprietorship like it is here, or in the form of dividends, if it was a corporation.